Hey there, I'm Bailey and welcome to my channel where we discuss all the tips and tricks necessary for you to live a life of adventure. If you are wondering whether big dogs or small dogs make better hiking companions, or maybe if just one or the other is good at hiking at all, then this is the video for you. Today we're going to be going through all the pros and cons of big dogs as well as small dogs and what things each one is better at and how they just do overall on your different hiking adventures and backpacking trips. Now, in case you don't know, I have two of my own dogs. I have Prima, who's a German Shepherd and weighs about 70 pounds, as well as Skittles, who is a 10 pound Border Terrier. And I hike, backpack through hike with both of them. And they both have their different advantages and disadvantages that I've seen over the years. And I really enjoy just being able to get out with both of them and enjoy the outdoors. Now, before we jump in, I do wanna say that if you are interested in getting more tips and tricks all about hiking and backpacking, then you might want to consider subscribing to my channel. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is ease of rescue. So this is something that is becoming more and more discussed in a lot of the different groups, and rightfully so. A lot of owners are concerned that if their dog gets injured while in the backcountry, that they might not be able to get them out. And this is one place where small dogs really do shine quite brightly. Now, on my own through hike this last year, I did find that the pro to hiking with Skittles, who's so small, is that I'm actually able to carry her on top of my backpack, even when I have all of my other backpacking supplies. For example, down in the San Juans, one thing I was able to do was to give her a little bit of a ride, not because she was injured, but just to give her feet a break so that way we could still cover miles, but she could just have you know some extra time to recover so she could do well the next day instead. Now, of course, if your dog you know, tears up a pad, breaks a leg, something like that, gets bitten by a snake, this is a huge pro because you don't have to leave all of your gear and emergency supplies behind, but you can still get your dog out in a timely manner. The bigger your dog gets, the harder it is to get them back out to the trailhead and to your car and obviously then to your vet. So with like a dog like Prima, who weighs half or more of what I weigh, you know, since I hike solo, it's definitely something that's crossed my mind. And while I certainly could get her out, it would be much more time consuming and difficult because I'd either have to carry an emergency rescue harness, like the ref rescue gear harness that I reviewed a couple weeks ago, or I would need to build some sort of sledge, carry her out, or, you know, call for help, that kind of thing. Now that's one plus one for the small dogs. A plus one for the big dogs is that they tend to handle the elements much better. So by this, what I'm specifically talking about is mostly cold, and of course this is going to depend on the breed. Dogs with really short hair or from regions that were typically hot are obviously going to have a harder time no matter what the size compared to dogs that are bred to be from northern cold climates. But one thing that you cannot get around no matter what the breed is just that physically speaking, Small dogs have a higher surface area to volume ratio, which means that they must have a faster metabolism in order to keep up with the amount of heat they're losing, just because there's a larger surface to essentially lose all that heat from their bodies. Larger dogs, in comparison, basically, even though, of course, they have a lot of surface area too, they have more substance inside to like keep all that heat around their heart, keep them warm, keep them from getting cold. So they just tend to be a little bit hardier in some situations, no matter what you do. And I've definitely found this to be the case. You know, Skittles is for sure a bomber dog. I've done lots of super cool things with her. But I've found that when it gets really cold, even, you know, when Prima gets a little bit chilly, Skittles just feels it much worse no matter what. Like we did a seven mile in, seven mile out backpacking cabin trip thing in December. And even with a sweater and stuff, Skittles just got chilled quite a bit quicker than Prima did when it was down in the negatives. Of course, the nice thing about this is you can combat this with like coats and stuff. So obviously there's workarounds for this, but it's just something to keep in mind. Okay, so one thing I wanna talk about that's kind of like in the middle is navigating difficult terrain. So one thing I really enjoy doing with my dogs is not like real mountaineering, but definitely like peak bagging and that kind of thing and definitely scrambling and doing more difficult trails. So one thing that small dogs can sometimes struggle with is just navigating those really large obstacles on the trail. So for example, like really huge logs that they have to jump over or when you're like bouldering and scrambling near the top of a peak, if they're big boulders with really big gaps, you know, sometimes it can be hard for them to jump across. So they have to find a different way around or you might just have to help them jump across. The flip side to that is if you have a large dog, usually they can get over easier just because of their size, but eventually if they do need help, then it's going to be a little bit harder to help them. I've never had a big issue with Prima. Usually if it's a big gap or something, I'm strong enough that I can like carry her a short distance, or if she can put her paws up, I can lift up her hind end. And of course, you know, on the San Luis Loop, we crawled over 
so many blowdowns, so many blowdowns and avalanche debris and all sorts of things. And she did just fine. She's always been really great on that kind of thing. But if your dog struggles or is older and it's a large dog, then that's just something to kind of keep in mind. Okay, so another pro of a small dog over a large dog is they need less gear. So this is less important on day hikes than it is backpacking or through hiking. But through hiking especially, you know, I've had people ask me about through hiking with my dogs. And one thing I say, if, it's, if I only had to pick one dog, chances are I'd probably pick Skittles. And one of the reasons why is because she just has way less gear and way less food. So, you know, when your dog needs to eat 4,000 calories and you're carrying all of it, that's a lot of dog food. And that's how much Prima eats. Skittles is much easier to fit her food in. I don't need a larger tent because she can just sleep in my sleeping bag with me. Whereas since all of us go together, I've had to get a tent that is the next size up. So I use a two person tent to accommodate Prima. I've had to cache food and think much harder about what I'm gonna feed just because Prima is a big dog. She needs a lot of food and a lot of calories to keep her going. And that makes it so that I really realistically could never be an ultralight backpacker in the true sense if I'm gonna be hiking with my dogs. I've given that up. I can still be pretty lightweight, but it's a sacrifice that I definitely make taking a large dog with me on backpacking trips. And of course, along with that too, the bigger the dog, the more food they eat, the bigger the poop. So that's also a lot more poop I carry out as well. And that just kind of goes along with that too. So do keep that in mind. All right, but again, there's an, a flip side to this. And that is if your dog is able to carry gear, your big dog will be able to take some of that load off better than a small dog would. So, you know, dogs can usually carry somewhere between 10 to 15% of their body weight. If you have a dog that was bred as a draft breed, like a Bernese or something, then maybe they can carry a little bit more depending on what your vet says. But that means that a dog that weighs 70 pounds can carry much more like, you know, eight-ish pounds where in her pack, whereas Skittles who only weighs about 10, 11 pounds can only carry about one pound. So theoretically, Prima could be carrying her weight pretty well and really helping out with a lot of that weight to lighten up my pack but that's dependent on your dog doing well carrying pack. Prima typically doesn't on long distance trips or through hikes, so then I do end up carrying that weight, but if you have a dog that really enjoys that kind of thing, then they can kind of help out more, whereas a small dog like Skittles, I don't even have pack for her just because she really can't carry much anyway, so it's not worth it to me. So when it comes to travel, let's say that you want to travel across the country to go do this dream hike of yours. This is another spot where small dogs really do shine. So, you know, if you want to go to Alaska, but you don't want to drive, like right now, since Canada's closed, a small dog is your bet. Because if you have a dog that's Skittle sized, they can fly in the cabin and it's just much easier to travel with. It's, you know, easier hotel wise. Some hotels only allow dogs that are under a certain weight all that kind of thing. So that is another plus one for small dog. And just overall, they can be a lot less stressful if you're visiting family, seeing other people, staying in a hostel, you know, who knows? They just take up less space. It's a lot less stress or easier to manage in some of those kind of traveling type situations. Now, big dogs, on the other hand, the way they can kind of make up for that is that, you know, they can be a bit more intimidating and maybe make you feel safer traveling. So whether that's wildlife or people, you know, with small dogs, you have to worry about them getting snatched up by wild animals like coyotes and stuff, whereas big dogs are more likely to help stand your ground, make your group look bigger, scare off wildlife. And I will say for sure that when I've been like road tripping and stuff, Prima has definitely made me feel much safer camping in more urban areas than Skittles would have. You know, Skittles has a nice bark, but someone's gonna take a German Shepherd much more seriously than a small little terrier. So at the end of the day, you know, really there's pros and cons to both. Hopefully if you are a person that is considering hiking with a small dog, but you're not sure if that's the kind of things they can do, you've now seen that small dogs can hold their own just as much as big dogs can and that both of them have their own pros and cons. Now, I will say that, of course, this is not taking into consideration that there's kind of like a middle ground. There's a lot of people that are all about those medium-sized dogs, like cattle dogs, border collies, Aussies, those kinds of things. This is just kind of looking at the other two ends of the spectrum. I will say too that, of course, you know, like breed structure, how well they're bred, how healthy they are really makes a big difference as well. A small dog that has really terrible knees is obviously going to struggle a lot more than a dog like Skittles that is relatively healthy and was bred to, you know, be able to spend her days outside. 
Now, if you're looking for more information on how to kind of figure out if your dog is well suited to hiking and backpacking, or if you are interested in finding your future hiking companion, then you should definitely go check out this video next. It's all about picking the right hiking and backpacking dog for you and your lifestyle. If you have specific questions about the differences of hiking with small dog or big dog, then definitely let me know down in the comments. Again, I have two of my own and I really enjoy hiking with both dogs for different reasons and I would be more than happy to answer your questions. And then if you have found this video to be helpful, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. That just lets me know that I should continue making more videos just like this. So until next time, we'll see you out there. Have happy trails and go watch this video next.